What if one of the greatest stealth fighters ever built was killed off too soon, only to rise again decades later? For years, the YF-23 was dismissed as a forgotten. What if project, overshadowed by the F-22 Raptor? But today, whispers of its rebirth are echoing across the Pacific. Japan is pouring serious money into next-generation fighters, and some believe the legendary Black Widow too could inspire one of the most advanced jets the world has ever seen. So, why would anyone bring back a design that supposedly lost in the past? And how did it suddenly become a contender in tomorrow's air wars? Let's dive into the story of the YF-23, an aircraft once written off, now fueling one of the most exciting conversations in modern aviation. The Northrop YF-23, better known as the Black Widow II, remains one of the most fascinating aircraft the U.S. Air Force ever tested. Only two prototypes were built in the late 1980s and early 1990s for the Advanced Tactical Fighter Competition. The mission was clear. Replace the F-15 Eagle with something that could outclass rising. Soviet threats like the Sioux, 27, and MiG, 29. Northrop partnered with McDonnell Douglas, while their rivals, Lockheed, Boeing and General Dynamics presented what would eventually evolve into the F-22 Raptor. After nearly four years of intense design, testing, and evaluation, the Air Force chose Lockheed's design. The YF-23 program was shut down. But here's the twist. Rather than disappearing, the jet gained a cult following. Many aviation fans argued it was the better machine. And now... Japan's ambitious fighter program has brought the YF-23 back into the spotlight, fueling speculation about whether its DNA could find new life in the skies. Back in 1981, when the U.S. Air Force first launched the ATF program, they were chasing the impossible, stealth, speed, agility, and cutting-edge avionics all in one package. Northrop Stealth Engineers, fresh from working on the B-2 bomber, explored three radical concepts. One used canards for agility, another pushed stealth to the extreme and was nicknamed the Christmas tree. And the third struck a balance, what they called the high stealth fighter. This final design, with its diamond-shaped wings, rudder vader tails, and carefully aligned exhaust troughs, became the YF-23. Fast forward to 2018. Reports surfaced that Northrop Grumman had quietly pitched a stealth fighter concept to Japan that looked strikingly similar to the YF-23. Instead of offering a finished design, they proposed a toolbox of technologies. Yet the resemblance was enough to spark global speculation. Could Japan actually bring the Black Widow 2 back to life as part of its F-3 program? At the time, Japan faced soaring costs, over $40 billion for development, and wanted international partners. Both Lockheed Martin and Northrop responded, though Japan insisted core technologies like avionics, engines, and sensors be developed at home. By 2020, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was chosen as lead contractor, keeping the dream alive but closing the door on a direct YF-23 revival. Then in 2022, Japan joined forces with the UK and Italy to create the Global Combat Air Program, GCAP. The focus shifted to a multinational stealth fighter, designed to dominate future battles with advanced networking, sensor fusion, and electronic warfare systems. Picture this, a Japanese F-3 patrolling the East China Sea. Its radar quietly picks up the heat signature of a stealthy J-20 at long range. At the same time, drones ahead relay targeting data, while airborne radar planes feed in additional tracking. The pilot doesn't just see one radar sweep. He sees a complete picture built from multiple sources, all processed in real time. When he launches a missile, its guidance can even be updated mid-flight using data from any of those platforms. That's the future Japan is building toward. And while the YF-23 may never fly again, its ghost lingers, shaping the aircraft of tomorrow and reminding us that sometimes... The losers of history leave behind the greatest legacies. Imagine a fighter jet that could outgun the F-35 while staying completely invisible to radar. That's exactly what Japan is building with its new F-3. 
a project that carries echoes of one of the most legendary stealth fighters never put into production, the YF-23. The F-35 typically carries just four missiles inside to keep its stealth intact. But Japan's F-3 is being designed with larger bays that could hold six or even eight weapons without breaking cover. It's a bold leap forward, and it ties back to the same principles that made the YF-23 so revolutionary. Stealth first design, long-range dominance, and advanced technology that was years ahead of its time. So why does the YF-23 still fascinate pilots and engineers decades later? Because it wasn't just a jet. It was a turning point in aviation history. It showed how politics, strategy, and even marketing can decide the fate of a fighter. Not just performance. Japan's new fighter may not look like a YF-23, but its goals. Extended range, massive firepower, advanced networking, feel like they were pulled straight from Northrop's sole playbook. Japan has set five key goals for the F-3. Win future air battles. Integrate new tech as it emerges. Keep upgrades simple. Support Japanese industry. And control costs. Straightforward, but ambitious. What makes it special is how deeply Japan is focusing on sensors and connectivity. This jet won't just fight. It will lead. Pulling data from drones, other fighters, and early warning planes, acting as the quarterback of the battlefield. Expect conformal radar antennas, built directly into the fuselage, electronic warfare systems, and countermeasures that give it a massive edge. Defense leaders have made one thing clear. The F-3 must outgun the F-35 and dominate in networked warfare. Just like the YF-23, it prioritizes stealth, sensors, and speed over old-school dogfighting. The technology is cutting edge. Stealth shaping. Radar absorbing materials. Advanced fly-by wire systems. And lessons from the X. Two Shin Shin stealth demonstrator all feed into this design. Japan's also exploring thrust deflecting nozzles. Giving it agility that even the YF-23 never had. Powering it all is the new XF-9 engine. Built for high thrust, longer range. And massive payload capacity. Aviation analysts even nicknamed the F-3 Godzilla because of its sheer size. It's being built to fly farther, carry more, and dominate the skies. If Japan were to create its own YF-23, it would combine sleek stealth, shaping with modern thrust control, balancing invisibility with maneuverability. This isn't about dogfights. It's about spotting the enemy first, striking from miles away and vanishing before anyone knows what happened. Modern warfare demands information dominance, and that's where the F-3 truly separates itself. Unlike the YF-23, which never fully tested its mission avionics, Japan's fighter is being designed from the ground up as a digital hub. It will fuse data from radar, infrared tracking, and electronic sensors, then share it instantly across the battlefield. The YF-23 was ahead of its time. The F-3 may finally bring those ideas to life. Bigger, smarter, deadlier, and built to carry Japan into the future of aerial warfare. Imagine a fighter jet that doesn't just fly. It thinks, instantly sharing every piece of information with its allies in real time. That's the battlefield Japan is preparing for. A world far beyond the fighters of the 1980s and 90s. This is where Japan... S-Vision splits from what Northrop once pursued with the YF-23. Japan wants its F-3 to be a master of maneuverability. That's why they tested thrust vectoring paddles on the X-2. Northrop, on the other hand, went the opposite way. No thrust vectoring at all. They shaved off the weight and focused on making the YF-23 as aerodynamically clean as possible. In the end, Japan may strike a balance. Mixing smart aerodynamic design with selective thrust, vectoring for extreme agility at high angles of attack. But if Japan also wants a true long-range interceptor to defend the Pacific, then Northrop's priorities, range and fuel efficiency, still matter. And that's the real challenge. Balancing agility with endurance. There's another reason Japan isn't just reviving the YF-23 blueprint. They want to keep their defense industry strong. Profits at home and skills sharp for the next generation.
Copying someone else's aircraft doesn't build a future. The YF-23 story still matters, though, because it teaches hard lessons about priorities, trade-offs, and presentation. Northrop's engineers created a brilliant aircraft, but they failed in marketing. Lockheed stole the spotlight and convinced decision-makers. Japan's program will need not only cutting, edge technology, but also consistent political and public support. The X, two demonstrator and flashy concepts might inspire, but the real battle is keeping momentum alive for decades. Look at the F-22, an engineering marvel, but only 187 ever built before production shut down. Japan can't afford that mistake. Their fighter isn't just about having a new aircraft. It's about securing supply chains, controlling costs, and keeping their aerospace industry alive for future generations. That's why international partnerships matter. The GCAP program with the UK and Italy proves Japan understands this. Building six-generation fighters today is a global effort. Sharing technology and costs reduces risk and accelerates progress. Their F-3 and GCAP projects aim for prototype in just a few years, with operational jets expected by the mid-2030s. The YF-23 showed that even the most advanced design can lose if the industrial and political foundation isn't strong enough. It also proved that stealth, range, and agility can be pursued in different ways. And sometimes the better jet doesn't win. Japan isn't copying that aircraft, but its spirit is alive in the F-3. The real story isn't about Japan building a new YF-23. It's about a nation charting its own course, learning from past projects, combining global expertise, and creating a fighter designed for the challenges of tomorrow. Whatever emerges from Japan's program, it won't just be a step forward. It could be a giant leap for the future of air combat.